What's going on YouTube? This is Jamil here. Um, it's been, I think, maybe two weeks since I made a video, and it's probably the biggest mistake I've ever made. Can, I mean, yeah, I me mean, having an injury is not an excuse, but, you know, along with having this injury, I've just been so unbelievably busy. I've just been constantly working, and on top of that, I haven't even been on YGO Pro in about two weeks. I haven't even been to a Locals in at least three weeks, so, I mean, it's just been working every Saturday, every Friday, and it's just been hectic. I mean, I had to raise the, the funds, um, because, you know, bills, you know, injury equals more bills, so there's that, and so I'm sorry for that, but all in all, there was a few videos I wanted to make, um, within these past couple weeks, but I feel like doing that is just, you know, regurgitating the same things that I've heard of, you know, 112 times already. One being link summoning, two being a ban list. But I want to talk about both in this video, and I'm going to try and keep it a little bit short. Anyway, um, first off, let's talk to the ban list. Um, it's not live for the TCG, but I did get a sneak peek at the OCG list. Um... All in all, it's pretty good. Um, the one thing I don't necessarily agree with is Fairy Tale Snow going down to two. I honestly don't think that's enough because Snow is just so unbelievably powerful. Again, I've said multiple times I don't have a problem with good cards as long as there's some sort of cap to them. As long as there is a limit, like some sort of limit to to their power, a limit to their use. But the fact that Snow has zero limits as to how many times you can use the effect, it just makes it so absurd. And not to mention it opens way too many OTKs if it's in the Infernoid deck. You know, there would be times where I could survive maybe even one snow, but if there's a second one in the grave and it gets summoned, that's just a stupid overpowered. But, you know, if you don't beat the Infernoid player within the first, like, two turns, snow is going to single-handedly be the reason you lose. Again, it's the fact that you can keep on continuously summoning, uh, summoning out of the grave. You can do it five times in a single turn. You get five Book of Moons, and you can keep overlaying with it. You can keep, you know, doing whatever with it. There's just no limit. That's why uh, Snow is just, I don't know, I, I have so many problems with Snow and just how overpowered it really is. It should never be a three. Um, other than that, everything else on the list is okay. Uh, the next one is Dimensional Barrier, again, I don't know how many times I gotta say, D-Barrier literally, like, kills a lot of these decks, you know how, um, you know, the D-Barrier is literally the sole reason why a lot of these decks that were viable a couple months ago are just not seeing play, you're not seeing totally awesome heroes anymore, you're not seeing ABCs anymore, I mean, you're hardly seeing any other Metalful variant that isn't, um, Zoo, I mean, yeah, I know that the zoo variant is probably the best one, but there's still very other viable options. But um, the fact, ever since the D-Berry came out, it's either it's gone to a point to where if you're relying on the extra deck, like decks like Totally Awesome Heroes and ABC, yeah, they would prefer to go first, but you know, at least they could play. At least they could actually play going second. They have a chance to kind of break your opponent's board and maybe do something, but. It's like, with D-Berry, it's like, if you don't go first, you're just going to immediately lose. Um, it's 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 much stronger than Emptiness in the sense where it's chainable and you can't stop it. You know, at least if Emptiness gets flipped, you can send something into the graveyard, get rid of the Emptiness, at least with Fiend. Since people are main decking Chalices, Vanity's Fiend A isn't too much of a problem. It's still a big problem, but it's not like uh, an auto-win kind of just unbeatable kind of thing. I mean, you can still book a moon it, which is good, but the fact that Deep Barrier is super chainable, and unless you, if you yourself went first and said, like, I don't know, a set of tools or something to actually stop it, you're not going to stop it. That's just the nature of it. And the fact that it locks out an entire game mechanic just for a turn, it's just, it's too powerful, I don't know why this card was in the game, and then on top of that, if you're gonna have a card this powerful, it needs to either have a big cost, or, you know, some sort of restrictive condition with it, 
But, of course, it has none of those. You can just flip it over for free, not pay anything, not, not tribute monsters, no, don't pay life points, don't discard any cards. I mean, it doesn't restrict you yourself from going into the extra deck on your next turn or whatever. Nope, it, everything is just free. And so you get to just go first, and since it's at three, you're probably going to draw it turn one, you're going to set it, and you're just going to lock your opponent out of the game for free. And that's just something that just really, really bugs me. And the fact that it still remains at three is just baffling to me. See, I mean, these decks that are just coming out of the woodworks, they're not the problem. It's its not that hard to break uh, break a zoo board. Like, it's hard. The part that makes it hard is D-Barrier. D-Barrier makes it to where you can't fight back. You can't fight back, and yeah, Strike is still really good too, but Strike only hits one monster. D-Barrier hits an entire mechanic. Totally different, and with Strike, you have to pay 1500 and you have to worry about it getting hit by things like Twister, Cosmic Cyclone, and all that. Again, D-Barrier doesn't have that problem. I don't, I don't think there's really... Well, there's a lot of other things I can go into to justify D-Barrier getting even a limited status, but... I mean, I'm pretty sure I've listed enough points already, so that's it for that. Those are the Snow and the Bear, literally the only two cards I have a problem with. Not not just me, but a lot of people. It's just the fact that they're just extremely powerful. Again, Zoo isn't really that big of a deal. I mean, if you, uh, again, just... Do you want to beat them? Just stop the recursions. Like, you know, you go go after the reset buttons. It's like Dragon Rulers all over again. If it, like you could have handled back back in 2013, they were manageable. If you could stop the Super Rejuvi from activating, if you could stop Super Rejuvi, they don't reset. What they have is what they have. The same thing. You just gotta apply the same thing with Zoo. Just Cherries, Emerald, and DD Crow the combo. Uh, if they went first, if they went first and you got DD Crow, just hit the combo. They can't re uh, cycle their stuff. And you Cherries, Emerald, they can't recycle their stuff. What they have is what they have. Once they lose it, that's it. And you know, Zoos are. I mean, they moved away from the Kaiju engine because of the sake of the mirror match. So they're really aren't going to really have much to fight back with if they're not having if they're not uh, playing kaiju so you're you're in an even better spot it's not i'm not saying you're going to win but you just you're not going to just go against something like super ultra like stupid consistent but um and as for zoos themselves i don't think they're going to be on the list for us in the TCG if um if uh i forgot his name house of champs the guy that runs the channel, if he was right and the list will drop uh, right after um, the Duelist Saga, which I'm looking forward to Diabound because Diabound is awesome. Um, if the list drops after Duelist Saga, they're not going to hit Zoo because, I mean, the other the new support hasn't even dropped yet. And they would just kind of make the new stuff completely useless, which, I mean, yeah, it will be, but... And I'm not saying that's going to be the cent central point of, you know, selling that set. I mean, True Kings will be on at full power. And then you have Ghost Ash. So there are plenty of other options. And I'm not saying it's not possible to hit Zoo this early. I'm just saying before, like, it just doesn't seem likely. It doesn't seem viable and it doesn't seem smart to hit Zoo before the other support even drops. That's just my two cents. I could be wrong. Um, you know, Konami is is known for being very unpredictable when it comes to these lists. So, in second, let's talk about Link Summoning. I'm done with the list. Link Summoning, again, I didn't want to make a video on that because, you know, at least like 60 other people made videos on Link Summoning and their opinions. Um, I have mixed feelings about Link Summoning, you know, I'm more optimistic about it because, yes, it adds a new dynamic to the game, yes, it requires people to be more innovative when deck building, you know, yes, it slows the game down just a tad bit if you're playing a heavy, extra deck reliant kind of deck, but the part I don't like about Link Summoning is the fact that, well, if you look at back of the, all the other mechanics that dropped, Synchros, Exceeds, um... Pendulums. Like, if you didn't like them, you didn't have to play them. You could still play the deck you like to play, and 
it wouldn't really matter much to you. If anything, those new mechanics probably even helped accelerate your your fan favorite decks, or it helped, you know, make those decks that you like to play better. You know, along the lines of that. You know, since you know, X Seeds Synchros, yeah, they helped out things like Six Samurai, they helped out things like Heroes. You know, you saw how these new mechanics drop pendulums, they they brought they brought uh, some other decks back to life and it was it was awesome. You know, it was good. You know, that's what that's what a new mechanic should do. It should help boost not only create new decks, but boost older ones. But, you know, the fact that you absolutely have to play this mechanic if you're playing an extra deck light kind of deck, it, it really does suck. And and in a sense, you have to use multiple of these link monsters because you know one of at least one or two of them is going to get answered by your opponent. And not only that, but you have to. Some of these require you to have to link up the chain, which requires even more extra deck space. Which at this point, if the extra deck space um, rule change, if there's no rule change for the extra deck space, meaning if it doesn't, if the limit doesn't go to twenty. That's going to be a problem. It's going to be some super, super tight extra deck spaces. Like, these decks nowadays, they're already super tight as is. But, you know, that's enough of that. What do I think about Link Summoning? It's going to slow down extra deck, like, heavy reliant kind of decks. But the other decks that wasn't super reliant on it, they have a chance to kind of come out of the woodwork. I'm talking about things like Mermail, Cosmo, Necroz... And even Monarchs, even though I haven't really seen Monarchs, I don't think Domain Monarchs is still that consistent because Pantheism is at 1, Sword Force at 1. Even a deck like UA would actually greatly benefit from this because really all you need to do is go into that one extra deck monster. If they don't hit uh, Invoker and they don't hit Terra Top, UA is going to be a top contender in my opinion. There just needs to be more representation for the deck. I mean, you go Terra Top and into Invoker and you can get out your... Um, your midfielder right off the bat so you don't have to worry about searching it with your one rota and you can um, play your uh, stadium terraforming still three uh, summon your perfect aces play stadiums you know play midfielder and search uh, block backer you know you do not have two negates you know set some back row I actually think you is gonna be a solid deck um, other thing um, they just this earlier this week, you know, we got news of tokens being able to be used for um, link summoning, which is, in my opinion, amazing because I still I still have my Mecha Phantom Beast deck, like all max rarity and everything, ulti first ham strats, you know, uh, original secret first uh, Draco sacks, like everything is still originals. And I've kept them in ship shape. They're just sitting. Uh, last time I played them was back in 2014 when the format was a little bit slower. When Telenites just came out. BA just came out. You know. Uh, yeah. That that sort of thing. When Pendulum started becoming more dominant. That's when uh, this deck kind of just started getting crept out. Because uh, they could just outplay all these traps. And Denko Seca was a card too. So there was that. So I couldn't really... And then Strike came out, and then I thought, huh, this deck is awesome again because I can now Strike Pendulum Summons, but there goes still a card. Uh, things like that, but now that I see that this format is a little bit slower, like Phantom Beast actually might make a pretty good Surgeance. Uh, considering that an end phase scapegoat is definitely a thing, you can end phase scapegoat into a Firewall Dragon. And, you know, you play something like Interdimensional Matter Transporter, even though that's clearly bad. You know, something to just remove it from the field so then when it returns, it goes to the main monster zone. Now you have a bunch of uh, monsters you can link to it and you can start recurring your stuff from the graveyard. You can start bouncing stuff. And I just think Mecha Phantom Beast will actually be a pretty good deck. I mean, now that we got things like Carter Demise, um, you know, and things of that matter, you know, you can tech in things like Barrier Statues. Uh, True Kings, remember, the Dragon Ruler is 2.0, so you can play um, a certain attribute with its corresponding attribute, and it works. So, eh, my two cents on Link Summoning is, 
Um, I like it, but I don't like it in the sense where you have to play Link Summoning to play things like, you know, DDD. But on the flip side, um, and on the uh, negative side, Gofu is likely to get hit preemptively, which, again, people still say Link's kill 80% of the decks that exist, but as long as Scapegoat's at 3, it shouldn't be a problem. Look, I mean, if you think about it, you in face Scapegoat, and you just make your Deco Talker, you now can make Crystal Wing and Siegfried and DDDs like you were always going to do. And if you went first and you set the scapegoat, you can also play things like Gate, you get more advantage along the way, you know, things like that. You know, people need to think about these things. There's so many things to just stack monsters on the field. Venus, TG Warwolf, TG Striker, things that just add extra monsters, you know, things that are just special themselves, things that can, um, things that summon tokens in general. There's so many token spawners in this game, it's like you have no idea. But, uh, mm, all I, all I, um, am really, I guess, saying is, um, Link Summoning is in the end, and who knows, maybe we can find a very, very good sleeper deck that we don't even really give a second look to. Um, that uh, can actually greatly benefit from not only token spawning, but for link summoning, you know, buying them extra turns. We just got to find out what deck that is. You know, when I first uh, got wind of the whole tokens can be used as materials for link summoning, Mecha Phantom Beast was literally the first deck I thought of. And Simo mentioned it, and I'm like, well, shit, this is now on people's radar. Fuck. But, you know... I'm surprised even someone as, you know, known as Simo could actually think of something, you know, like, like Mecha Phantom Beast as everybody else claimed to be a bad deck, which it really wasn't. It was actually incredibly good. Um, everything else was just faster, and people just like to play faster decks, but Mecha Phantom Beast was always a slower, more controlled deck that could abuse the living hell out of any floodgate in the game that's not skill drain. And, you know, you could just, like, super side all the floodgates in the world in your side deck. You could main deck all the trash cards that wouldn't work in any other deck but are super good in Mecha Phantom Beast, like Spiritual Wind Arts, you know, to just spin stuff to the bottom of the deck, Horn of Heavens, and negate normal summons, you know, all that stuff. In face scapegoat, activate token Sunday, blow up four cards on the field. That was incredibly good. You know, enemy controller, take monsters for free. There's just so much you can do in Mecha Phantom Beast, so much you can do with those tokens. And the more you, I mean, and not only that, but, you know, ever since the release, we've just gotten so many more useful cards that can power up the deck. Storming Mirror Force, Quaking Mirror Force. You know, we have Carter Demise now. Again, that, that alone is just probably going to just superpower the deck. Now... You know, I'm not saying that's going to make this deck like Tier 1 or Tier 0, but I'm just saying, given the given the resources we've acquired over the past... 2013 was when it came out. Over the past, you know, three and a half years since the deck's release, it's worth giving the deck another shot. So, that's just it for this episode. So, guys, um, what do you think? I mean, I don't think... Um, in terms of the ban list, again... Snow and Dew Barrier are my only issues. Again, Maxi um, is still a card that's super, super powerful. I honestly don't think it should still be at multiples, but Link Summoning could potentially slow it down so it could lose some of its power. But, you know, at the same time, you got a card like Scapegoat that can just turn everything back on again. But at the same time, Kai's user thing, Slumber might get hit. Which it doesn't matter really all that much because it's a dark hole, but as long as you have the monsters themselves, they're still really good. Waterfront is still a card, so you can still search kaijus if that's what really mattered. You know, that's the other thing. Great old kaijus, that could also be a deck. That could really benefit. I mean, considering that the Water True King came out, <clears throat> you could banish two back row for free if both the monsters you destroy are water. E I mean, if you destroy Eagle, you take a monster. I mean, that's pretty good. You know, Waterfront 
would just be, I mean, every, if people are main decking Kaiju Engines now, I mean, I actually, honestly, wouldn't mind playing a great old Kaiju deck actually right now. I mean, and because all people do is give you Gamma Seals. If I have Waterfront on board, I have free negates. I can summon Gamma Seals of my own. Have more negates. So, yeah, if you don't want to play Zeus, if you don't want to play Infernoid, just play, like, a Kaiju variant of a deck. Like Red Okaiju or something. I don't think Grass is greener. It should be hit because it really does do something for 60 plus card decks. You know, 60 plus card decks deserve to be just as good as 40 card decks. But again, the problem with that is just Fairy Tail Snow. Fairy Tail Snow is the problem, not the Grass. You know, just keep that in mind. Snow is just the the powerhouse, the card that just shuts everything down. As long as you have resources, and then when you got the Void Vanishments and the Void Trap cards, to just summon all these Decatrons and just dump three more cards in the grave for free. It's just more resources for Snow. So, let me know what you guys think about this. Um, let me know um, if there's anything I miss. If there's anything you disagree with, I would like to he uh, get some feedback, both positive and constructive criticism in the feed, in the comments below. It's been a while since I've done this. I need to start making more videos. Um, problem is, this app hasn't really had an update yet, so i got to kind of wait. But until then, I guess I can make some um, deck profiles, or not deck profiles, play with, like, Great Okaijus or something. I'll even play with uh, my Metal Foes Mecha Phantom deck. That deck is very, very fun to me. Um, you could make it competitive, depending on what you put in it, but that's besides the point. I said my piece for ban list. I said my piece for um, link summoning. So let me know what you guys believe. Let me know what you guys think. If there's any other good ideas in terms of decks that we could play post link summoning, let me know. All right, guys. That is it for today. You guys take care.